Hey guys, this is the How the Periodic Table is Organized lecture. Um, I just wanted to show you guys, last week I was telling you a lot that um, I have the questions as I am making these videos, right? So these questions are here. Um, I promise you these are all going to be addressed within this video, okay? So there's no reason to hop over to Google and do that copy and paste game like we talked about last week, okay? So um, taking a look at this screen right here, I know it's kind of hard to see. That little blurry word in there is trying to say valence shell. So uh, remember one of the things we were focusing on last week was that the outermost shell of the atoms is called the valence shell, and we call those electrons the valence electrons, right? And those valence electrons are really important because uh, these atoms want to fill their valence shells, right? So they want to have the outermost shell full. And so um, different atoms whose shells are not full are more likely to bond <clears throat> with certain other atoms whose shells are also not full um, in order to get their shells to be full. So sometimes that can be as simple as two atoms, uh, like we talked about last week. Sometimes that can be, you know, half a million atoms, right? So um, taking a look this week, we're going to kind of focus on this idea. Uh, I was introduced last week as well, but things in column one have one valence electron. Things in column two have two valence electrons. Things in column 13 that we call column three have three valence electrons. Things in column four, which it's actually 14, but we say four, is four valence electrons. In column 15, which is five, five valence electrons. 16, which is six, has six valence electrons. Um, 17, right, so we're down here at this point. 17 has seven, and column 18 has eight. So things that are in column 18, which we call column 8, are naturally um, way less reactive. Um, they're happy on their own. They're already, they already have their shell full. Okay, so um, that's something that we're going to be looking at. That's something that we need to be paying attention to because um, part of your guys' project for the end of this quarter is to be able to um, show me a model of an atom that would bond with another atom to make a molecule. So um, this week, your guys' assessment is to make a simple, just to make a, a Bohr model of a simple atom, and you guys will see that in the other video for you know the third or fourth time. But um, it'll be a good refresher before you do that. This one we're going to focus on, you know, how does the periodic table help us understand atoms? Okay, so um, taking a look, just a little review. Electrons are all atom, or electrons and all atoms are arranged around the nucleus in regions called energy levels. Uh, we've also called that the orbit or the electron cloud. Um, and then looking down at the bottom, it says the largest atoms have as many as seven energy levels. Okay, and if we take a look here, um, we can see that in the periodic table we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows okay so earlier we were just talking about the columns telling us how many valence electrons they have but if we take a look at the left side and we look we have one row of electrons because hydrogen only has one electron so that goes in the first shell helium has two that's the first shell once we drop down to row number two well lithium has three electrons right it's in column one so that means it has one valence electron it's in row two so that means it has two shells, okay? Well, if two electrons go in the first shell, that leaves one for the second shell. So it has two shells. It's in column one, it has one valence electron. Let's come over, uh, look at carbon, okay? So we're in column one, two, three, four. So it should have four valence electrons, okay? Well, its number is six. So that tells us it has six protons, so it must also have six electrons naturally, okay? It's in row two, so that tells us it must have two shells or orbit levels, okay? So let's think about it. If it has six electrons, well, the first shell can hold two. The second shell can hold up to eight. Well, if the first shell is holding two and carbon has six total, that means there are four left for that second shell. It's in column four, four valence electrons. It's in row two, two energy levels. Okay, so this thing is kind of a grid, right? We're like sort of thinking about that game Battleship, you know, A4, something's there. This is kind of how the periodic table is arranged as well. It's, it's organized with a, with a purpose. 
<clears throat> so the outermost energy level, we call it the valence shell, and the electrons that are the furthest out there, uh, we call those the valence electrons. All right, so um, hopefully you're taking a look at the questions because we've answered several at this point. Okay, um, so then thinking about it, all the periodic tables you've seen usually are kind of colorful, right? And we do that, we talked about this last week as well, because they are, um, they have, they're grouped based on similar properties, and that's um, interesting to think about because you're like, well, I thought they were grouped on, you know, based on how many valence electrons they have, how many shells they have, um, and, and you're right, both of those things are true. Um, atoms and elements that are similar um, behave similarly, right? They're more likely to react if they have this many valence electrons, right? We kind of were talking about that earlier. So it makes sense that things that are in certain columns would have certain um, similar properties, right? So in the groups, and I don't want to say in all groups because if you take a look up here, we see that this group kind of like crisscrosses a, a bit, this one little crisscrosses a bit, this one a bit, but for the most part, they, they have a, a close similarity in the number of valence electrons they have, okay? Um, so in atoms of elements in groups one and two, so at this point with groups one and two, groups, we're talking about columns, um, the number of valence electron matches the group number, okay? So you can see that, we see that in column one, there's one valence electron. In column two, there's two valence electrons. Let's think about, you know, magnesium right here. Its number is 12, okay? Now it's in column two, it's in row three, right? So it should have two valence electrons, it should have three shells, okay? So let's think about it. If the number is 12, well then two fit in the first shell, so now we need to fit 10 more. The second shell can hold eight, so now we're at 10 total, and now we have two more for that third shell. What do you know? It's in column two, it has two valence electrons, and it's in row three, it has three rows, okay? Once we come over here, uh, we subtract 10 from the number up top because the three through 12 comes down here and then it goes 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. These ones in here just don't follow the same pattern, uh, these as well down here. Um, so when we think over here, we see 13, we just think three. When we see 14, you think four. When you see 15, you think five. When you see 16, you think six. When you see 17, you think seven. When you see 18, you think eight, right? And that'll tell you how many valence electrons there are. So like everything in column six has six valence electrons. So let's look at chlorine, right? Oh wait, let's, never mind. we're saying six. Let's say um, sulfur, right? S for sulfur. So the number 16, so it has 16 electrons. It's in column six and it's in row three. Okay, so it should have six valence electrons, it should have three rows. Okay, so if we have 16 electrons, two fit in the first one, eight fit in the second one, we're at 10, boom, six are left for the third one, third shell, six valence electrons. Okay, atoms of elements in groups three through 12, we're talking about these ones right here, these are the transition metals, they don't follow that rule. Um, and then helium over here, it's in the happy column because it has two electrons and the first shell holds two. So it is happy, it just doesn't quite fit the rule of having eight. I'm gonna skip through that. Um, all right, so the rest of your questions, it's asking about similarities, uh, properties in each group. So um, I'll give a few similarities of each one and you can kind of just pick one from there. Um, all metals except for hydrogen in group one uh, and they're super reactive, right? So if you think about it, you have one valence electron, like you can lose one or you can gain a bunch, right? Like if you lost one, you would just fall back to your next lowest shell. So like say, um, we're talking about this one right here, right? So it's in column one, it's in row two. So it should have one valence electron, it should have two rows. So that means that it has two electrons in the first shell and it has one electron in the second shell. All right, well, that atom can either fill the second shell by combining to one element or a bunch of elements, or it can just lose one electron, and now its lower shell has two and it's happy, right? So that can be said for all of the things in, in group one, all of the elements. Um, they are very reactive, which means they are likely to bond with other atoms and create compounds or molecules. Um, they're not stable, and they just they just want to they want to bond with other things, right? <clears throat> they are never found uncombined in nature, 
right? So we talked about table salt a lot. Um, NaCl is sodium and chlorine. Um, sodium is super explosive, like in water. You can toss it in water and it'll blow up. Chlorine is highly toxic, right? You breathe in chlorine gas or fumes or you, you drink water with chlorine, it makes you sick, it can kill you. Uh, but we put these things together and they're, they're okay, they're, they're stable. So um, sodium chloride is table salt. Um, potassium, bananas are loaded with potassium and they are always in compounds with other, um, other atoms. Group two, alkaline earth metals. They're very reactive because they only have to lose two and they can still gain six, but they're not quite as um, reactive as the alkaline metals. Um, it's because it's harder for their atoms to lose two valence electrons than it is for the alkali to lose one. Makes sense, right? You have to lose two instead of just losing one or gain more, right? Um, magnesium is mixed with other metals to make rims on cars. There's a fun fact. Calcium is an important part of the component that keeps your bones and teeth healthy. Uh, group 3 through 12, they don't have individual names. We just call them the transition metals. Um, they're less reactive and they don't lose valence electrons as easily. Silver and gold are transition metals. Um, iron, cobalt, nickel. All transition metals are the only elements known to produce a magnetic field. So that's an interesting thing, right? So um, magnetic fields being produced from elements and atoms. It's very interesting. Uh, the most common group from 13 is aluminum. Group 13 is the boron group, right? So now we're on to the other side. Um, most common is aluminum. So that's the stuff your soda cans are made out of. Interesting fact, it was considered more precious than gold or silver until the 1880s uh, when making it became a lot cheaper. Group 14, so now we're in column um, 14, but we think of it as four. Uh, it's the carbon group, and we have... They, so carbon is often found uncombined in nature, and carbon, what's super cool is everything from like your charcoal like that you have for a barbecue to a precious diamond is just is just carbon. Okay, so it's pretty interesting how um, excuse me, um, interesting how just heat, pressure, and time can change something um, like coal and turn it into a diamond. Um, I see we're at 12 and a half minutes in this video, so I'm gonna kind of squeeze by a little bit. The nitrogen group, group 15, they did not. Um, Nitrogen, okay, so fun fact, nitrogen makes up about 78% of the air that we breathe. A lot of people will say that we breathe oxygen, and you're right, we need oxygen, but our atmosphere is 78% of the, the air that we breathe, nitrogen. Um, it's also the same stuff that we combine with hydrogen to make fertilizer, right? So we breathe a lot of the same stuff that we can mix with hydrogen to make fertilizer. It actually happens naturally in nature. It's called nitrogen fixation. Um, when lightning strikes, it happens naturally. Um, so lightning strikes are good for soil. Um, there's in group 16, oxygen makes up 21% of the air we breathe. It's very reactive. So like whenever you see stuff rusting, that's called oxidation. Um, and that's caused by oxygen in the air. So like if your bike gets kind of wet and you leave it outside and the oxygen um, is just sitting there hitting it, the water, um, oxygen can cause holes to appear like in cars in metal your bike can rust away um, you can have your seat fall off the bike because the metal just gets so worn and rusted um, group 16 um, sulfur it makes sulfuric acid for car batteries and it smells like rotten eggs so if you ever go by like um, those geothermal plants and you smell that that egg smell that's sulfur the halogens are very reactive non-metals in group 17. So if we think about it, when we said group one was very reactive because they could gain seven or lose one, um, group 17 is very reactive because it just has to gain one. So a lot of stuff in column one will bond with stuff in column 17, which we think of as column seven because one plus seven makes eight, that shell is happy. So like sodium and chlorine, NaCl, one, seven, eight, boom. Um, the noble gases, they're unreactive. They just hang out, right? Their shell is full. They don't need to do anything. Um, and that's what we make like neon signs out of, light bulb filaments. Um, so from this, you should be able to uh, use the periodic table to kind of identify some properties of different elements, kind of know where things go. 
um, and then be able to see an element, say how many valence electrons it has and how many shells it has.